Someone has sent me this, a damaged DJI 03 ear unit. Well, at least I think it's damaged. It certainly looks new. It turned up in the post. It's clearly someone who knows who I am and where I am. Whoever you are, I want to say thank you. Now, the reason I've been sent an 03 ear unit is I actually asked on one of my live streams, if anyone has one, can you let me know? Because I'm looking for one for diagnostic purposes on how to fix the diode issue that we used to have on, say, the ear unit in the Vista where you lost the OSD. This is something that does seem to be still happening on 03 and I needed a sort of dead 03 ear unit that I can do a lot of diagnostics on and cause damage to that I don't have to worry about it never working again. So this turned up. However, before we do that, what we're going to do is a bit of a look at what is actually wrong with this because I have no idea at this moment in time. So what we need to do is open the box. I've just lifted the lid there a little bit. I haven't looked at this moment. We'll get it out and let's see what the crack is with this one. Okay, so someone, and I don't know who it is, but you are amazing and you have very kindly sent me this O3 ear unit. Now, this is clearly used if we take a look around it. Um, there's signs someone's been inside. The bottom is pretty caved in. Now, I was asking for an O3 ear unit to actually try and do more diagnostics on how to fix OSD issues. I don't know if this one has an OSD issue. I have no idea what's wrong with it. There was no notes or anything like that. So we'll do full diagnostics first and work our way through it. But you can definitely see the bottom plate is pressed in. I would not be shocked if we had a cracked ASIC on this. It is somewhat common on O3 for the Eagle 3 T chipset to get cracked. We'll have to have a look when we tear it down. Now, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is power this up. So I've got a spare slave cable that I use here on the bench. I'm just gonna double check my wiring chart for O3 because never assume you've got it right. Always double check. So there we go. So O3 that way, so we want plus pin one at the top. So this isn't a fully wired connector, this is a part wired. So yeah, we're gonna be plus minus, there we go. That should be fine. So I'm just gonna have to now try and get this connector to fit, making sure that I, I get it in at the right side. There we go, we're in there. So we will use a Vifly short saver as our protection for testing. So the first thing we'll do is I'm going to keep it on the low power mode and we'll see, first of all see does it even power up. Oh, straight short. Did you see the flash there? Oh, that was a straight short that was. I'll show you again. Oh, straight down. So we've definitely got a short on the input. I wonder if it's overcurrenting. Okay, let's just try it with a bit more current and see what happens. Hmm. Let's try that again. I can see the LED in there is flickering. It's not happy at all. Oh, and that is getting hot very, very quickly. I'll just do some thermals. Let's just take a look at it under the thermal camera. Okay, now I'm using the amazing IR Cam software. This is a paid piece of software that you can use with various thermal cameras. I do need to make a video on this because I was given access to this by the developer and it is fantastic. Um, but here you can see that on the screen there. So what I'm just going to do is power this back up again and then we'll see what happens. Oh yes, we can now see the temperature starting to change on that side there. It's not shorted out, but it's definitely getting hotter. It's a slow heat. Ow. It's definitely getting hot. You can now see it's at 70 degrees. Yeah. So clearly we have a very big short going on with this. 
Okay, so let's start with the teardown and see what's going on. Now, I do have some expectations of what I'll find on this ear unit. I suspect something shorted, maybe a cracked IC, although the increased temperature makes me think it's a short. Um, but clearly... Here we go, let's just remove the camera. Let's lift off the bottom plate. You can see the plenty of thermal compound. Don't think any has anyone been in here. They might have been in to have a look, but okay. We're going to need to get all of that cleaned up because we're going to need that if we put it back together. Okay, so as this seems to be the side with the biggest impact, I think before we even go any further, I'm going to pop this can off and have a look at what is going on this side because I think this will be a real key indicator of what has happened in this board. I can't actually remember what's under this side. Is it all voltage regulation? I have all of the teardown images on FPV Wiki, which, okay, we can have a look at if we need to. Okay, there we go inside. It is that one there. I think what we will probably do is power it back up and then just see what is getting hot with the thermal camera again just to give us an indication of exactly what is happening. Okay, so I've put the macro lens on the thermal camera now so this will give us a nice way of looking at it a little bit closer. We're going to power up. Ooh, now we can start to see... Heat, ooh, right there. Okay, right on that IC. Definitely a short. Definitely something on that IC there as well. That's getting incredibly hot too. There's a lot getting very hot here, very, very quickly. But also, some of that heat looked to be from the other side of the board. So I think we need to get them out and have a look what's going on. Okay, so let's just get it completely torn down now. Let's get it all apart and then we'll have a, a good look around it. I'm not seeing signs of water. And I will add now, I'm not expecting this to be a repair video. The, the, the goal of this... Hey, look, if I can repair it, I obviously would, but I am not remotely expecting this to be a repair video. Um, my suspicion is, is that we are very much in an end game position with this ear unit. But it will be interesting to see what is going on. Just trying to get in near to these cables. These are always a bit of an awkward one to get to. You've got to be careful on these as well because these are glued on, this cable inside. And if you're not careful, you'll actually pull components off the PCB when you release these. You've got to be really careful separating these boards off. They put glue on the connection on either side. Now, I tend to use a razor blade just to cut down into the glue on either side. So I don't cause any components to lift but you do have to be careful with it it would be very easy to cause some very real damage on this he says as he's picking it away like that so there we go that's that board off that's that board off. Another good way of doing that is with heat as well. Let's get him torn down. So we've got a lot of heat on the other side of this board. I wonder if we have a cracked ASIC. Let's, let's get in here and have a look. Again, we're going to cut in with the blade around this connector. Heat is also a good way of doing this if you need to. Yeah, 
here we are okay so let's now work around getting this can off this side these cans are very easy to damage i actually have a full teardown video on an o3a unit if you haven't seen it if you're interested in it um i will do a link to it in the video in that one i think i took a little bit more effort into not destroying things oh okay that's interesting oh this board i think has had a lot of force on it a lot of force on it There you go. Okay, so we freed that way. And the reason I said this board's had a lot of force on it, this corner is actually snapping off. Oh, we are. We are cracked. This is what I was expecting. I'll be honest. Haven't seen it crushed. Right, let me clean this up. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, right. Let me just get a, a fresh uh, Q-tip and some IPA. And then you'll be able to see it. Okay. Okay, let's clean that up now, and hopefully now you'll see the crack day sick. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. We'll get it under the microscope in a second, but yeah. You can see she is shattered. Okay, looking under the microscope there, you can see the Eagle 3T, and yeah, completely shattered. This is not the first time I've seen this. This is very common in a hard impact any form of flexing on the pcb and it will just shatter the silicon into multiple pieces end game no fix it's not an available component look if you could replace the eagle 3t you you absolutely would but unfortunately it's a deady the O3 is really not designed for this kind of crushing damage. And it is surprising that that force makes it through into that PCB. And the truth of the matter is, if it's enough force to crack that piece of silicon and just look at it shattered there, it is going to be enough force to break balls on things like the memory chip. Any damage on that? No, that looks okay. If we just flip over to the other side of the board... There's, these ICs are probably in a bad way. You can see heat has been on that one down there. But it, it doesn't look too bad. But the reality is, once that chip ends up in that state, it really is uh, for the bin. Now, just to quickly show you this ASIC under the thermal camera when we fire it up. Let's just see what happens. Oh, there, instantly, now you can really see the cracks in the chip. That gives you an indication of the mess that it is in. No recovering from that one. Well, I did call it at the start. I had a feeling that would be the case. The reality is I've seen too many of these with the same issue. Any form of external impact will result in a cracked IC non-fixable what this will be though is a donor and this donor will be used for me trying to understand the diode layout on the o3e unit with regards to the uart to try and offer some fix options if you do have an o3 where the osd doesn't work it's something i'm going to work on on the bench over a little bit of time i'm not going to film that because it's going to be quite a bit of work to do some dissecting but I will make a follow-up video when I understand what the situation is. Now, this does lead me quite nicely on to a conversation about O3 and the fact... Whoa, whoa. 
that it really isn't designed to be crashed or forced into frames. There is a weakness within O3 that if that ear unit housing gets crushed, it will crack the Eagle chipset. I called it before I even tore it down. I've seen quite a few of these now. And the reality is, whilst O3 offers many of the best features out there that you can get on digital FPV today, it isn't perfect and it is fragile, especially compared to, say, the Vista and the original DJI ear unit, especially the digital ear unit from DJI, that original one, it was bomb-proof. The Vista was largely bomb-proof as well. O3, on the other hand, though, is not. DJI have cut back as much as they can to save weight, but the reality of that means that it comes with it being slightly fragile. Now, as I've said, I'm going to be working on doing some diagnostics and trying to understand how the diode system works on the UART. I needed an ear unit to be able to completely destroy to do that. Whoever you are who sent this, thank you. Hopefully this video has been useful for you as well to understand what was actually wrong with it. If you're going to be flying ear units in frames, they need a bit of space around them. They really do. I highly recommend a bit of TPU above and below, especially if it's going into a bando basher. Now, that's it from me. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think below. As I've said, there'll be links to the thermal software in the description as well. If you'd like to support the channel to allow me to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only through the support of Patreons and buy me a coffee am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to make content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon. Oh, you're still here. Why are you still here? It's over. It's finished. I'm done. I've told you, check out the links and be on your way. It's my time now. I'm going to get my favourite sock and enjoy this magazine. Be gone with you.